the planet's got so many, so many huge challenges. It's, it's in many ways very, very depressing. Um, and the food system is, I argue, the most environmentally impactful of all human activities. The thing is our food system is actually working very well in the way it was designed. We've designed a food system that has focused on efficiency and optimization and calories. And if you think about agency, that means we can design a new system. And that is what we're doing at Thought for Food. We're equipping what I believe are the most powerful generations that we have to date. We have the largest youth population alive in history. These young people bring to the table a unique set of attributes that make them perfect agents for change around these global systemic challenges. They're entrepreneurially minded, they're globally connected, they're digitally savvy. And when you look at the problems facing our food system, you see there's a lot of inertia, there's a lot of entrenched ways of working, it's the least digitized industry sector there is. The average age of the world's farmer is over 65 years old. So we need to bring this creative idea and this entrepreneurial spirit of our world's next generations and show them there's lots of opportunities for you to do things differently. Three quarters of all the water we use as humans, mm -hmm. fresh water we yeah. use as humans, is used for agriculture, for putting food on their plate. So a box of tomatoes, that you would normally buy in the supermarket would take 100 litres of this. fresh water, 100 litres, just to produce those tomatoes in the Middle East, uh, where we are. Just and think about meat though, like, <laughs> sorry? I said, just think about water use in meat. meat. Like 20,000 yeah. litres exactly. for that yeah. handful of meat. So absolutely, yes, yes. I start by not eating meat or at least minimising or reducing your meat consumption. That's a very impactful thing to do on the planet's water balance. But for our tomatoes, which are actually eating a much greater volume than meat, yeah. and so actually have a bigger environmental impact if we uh, use our technologies, which are good technologies, mm. and some of them are definitely modern, most of them actually modern technology, but it's not rocket science, you know, it's not blindingly difficult, unlike the work you used to do. <laughs> you know, the, 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 we reduce the water footprint of that pox of tomatoes down to like five litres. Yeah. Mm. from 100 to 5. That's a big impact. Not zero, but if we make it just 5 instead of zero, theoretically you could take it down towards zero, so it's only the water that's in there, but then it wouldn't become a business. And so what we're doing in Red Sea is trying to develop technologies, deploy, develop and deploy technologies that are going to have a significant environmental impact, but are also economically viable. They make business sense, so then they're adopted. In entrepreneurship, it's very much about getting to a point where you can get investment, right? And the world of VC is is very sexy for for entrepreneurs, and you know people love to talk about raising their rounds. Um, but again, what we have in agriculture is a model of venture capital that isn't exactly fit for purpose for how things work. Uh, this is a sector that faces unique challenges and timelines. Um, you have a different risk profile. Farmers, for example, are literally betting their farms when they have to adopt a new technology. So they have to be convinced of the investment that they're about to make. Correct. You also have regulatory approvals, you have consumer acceptance issues for transformational technologies, which means a five-year exit is kind of unheard of. So what we're trying to do is also create space for these types of solutions to take off, have the time that they need to be incubated and nurtured in the market to get the, to those commercial inflection points where they're you know, able to have revenues, where they're able to um, have these type of pilot projects, for example, with big corporations so that then investment can come in. It is recognized uh, a long time ago that 40% of the food that goes into our bodies is produced by three species of plants, the, the, the grains, uh, so rice and maize and wheat. And this huge carbohydrate load has very, very low levels of micronutrients mm -hmm. and those concentrations are going down through a combination of breeding and climate change. The plants are absorbing more CO2, growing faster, the micronutrients that are in those grains are getting diluted. And so the problems are going from bad to worse. 
I was telling someone earlier, like one of my passions besides agriculture, and I spend most of my time on the topic of food and agriculture, but is electronic music. And in electronic music and in DJing, you're constantly mixing and remixing and bringing different genres together to create something new. Mm -hmm. So there is a stigma often when you talk about things like regenerative agriculture to investors, because they think it's low productivity, traditional, hippy dippy if you will and actually what we have the chance to do is to bring some of this traditional knowledge and ancient wisdom into the future by technifying it and, and mixing things that haven't been mixed before